This is one of the hard-fought series. I mean, most of these games are a one-point game as you guys get over the hump. Going into game seven, and what, I mean, and to come up with that big-time win on the road, are you guys extremely confident and you, th- you think you have them? Or are you guys like, hey, this thing can go either way. We got to be on point today. We had to be on point, but we were down, remember, 3-1. And we hadn't won in Philadelphia in a minute. So what we thought in our minds was that, that we were happy to get back home. Um, I talked to Maurice Cheeks about this game, and Maurice Cheeks was the starting guard for the 76ers at that time, became a Hall of Famer. Just a couple of, it seemed like a month ago, they were in the building. And I said, do you remember that series? He said, man, the greatest series I've ever played in. But then he added this to insult, then he says, we still should have won that series. Dude, you lost. Get over it. So it was that it was it was the, the greatest series I've ever played in. And in my opinion, maybe the greatest series leading up to a championship that two teams ever had to play. That year, Scal, both teams won 62 games. Oh my god. 62 yeah. games. And we nipped them out because we had won one more game in our division or something. So that's how crazy it was. Dr. J was so difficult when he got to that right hand. Why was he, why was it so easy for him to get in the paint and, and, and elevate over guys to control his body, even at the age? I mean, he was up there in age at that point. Scal, just that he was, he was still quick. He was still aggressive. Um, I remember the coach told me one time, he said, what I want you to do, I want you to push Doc to his right. And this is that strong hand where you just kind of swoop mm-hmm. in with that claw push him to his right, and then I want you to cut him off. And I said, with a helicopter? Because once he started, I couldn't get to that dude. So I tried to play him as tough as I could. What changed about me playing Dr. J was the first game I ever had to guard him. I might as well have been a concierge and said, this way to your table, Doc. He scored 45 against me. I was watching going, man, that was a great play. Man, that was nice. But then once I got to the point where I felt I could play with him and play against him, I think that made us that much more tougher. I think at first we kind of looked at them like they were our big brothers. And then after a while, we were just as superior as as they were. And I think that's why those series became so close. Were you you guys thinking if you got to the finals, you're going to be able to walk away with it. It was going to be an easy win. This right here was your NBA finals. That was the championship game. The game that you played, whoever won that series between Philly and Boston, and Philly being up 3-1, and you getting them back to Boston for game seven, whoever won that particular night was going to be the team. And you played Houston. No offense to Houston, but pretty much they had Moses Malone, and that was it. We knew that either one of those teams, Philly or Boston, could beat Houston. So that was the championship game that particular night. But I could tell in that third quarter, things were working for you guys. What what was working? How were you guys cutting this lead down? Well, we were attacking the rim. We were being physical. We were probably the best offensive rebounding team in the league. Remember, I played – they talk about the big three. Well, there actually was four of us. And I played in, with the best front line, I think, ever to play the game. Mikhail. Parrish, Bird, and Maxwell. And all these guys were in their 20s at the time. So that's how we got back in the basketball game, by being physical and being dominant in the paint. Yeah, you were really good at cutting the cutting to the basket and, and, and posting up, getting great position. Is that something that you've always done in your game? Yeah, I, I, I did that when I was in college, did it when I was in high school. High school, I was a little, little – not as big. I was only – I was 6'7", 170, so I didn't have any weight, but I still knew how to play the game at a a very high level. What I wasn't good at, I was not a good free throw shooter. So what I did over those summers, over and over again, I became a very good free throw shooter, and that allowed me to stay in these tough games and be able to play the way I I did. You know, walking down this lead, were were you guys thinking, all we got to do is get the lead and we're going to win this thing? We felt if we could keep it close, we felt if we get our crowd in it, if we could get them to crack at some point in the game that we were going to get our shot. There were five games decided by, I want to say, seven points in that series. So we knew it was going to be nip and tuck all the way to the end. And whoever got the last shot, that was going to be 
the team that was going to win. 